Good morning. I've been wanting to start a vlog for quite a while now, and so I've been looking at how other people do it on YouTube, and almost everyone that I come across is someone who's really well put together, great attire, maybe makeup done, and their place looks immaculate, all picked up and clean and super cute. So I thought that's the way I would go and try to recreate that. And I finally realized I never had the time to get this house picked up to that level of quality or myself put together to what I see other people doing. So I figured, F it, I'm just gonna start filming as is. Well, first of all, let me introduce you. This is Obi. His real name is Benton, but we call him Obi. There's a story about that, I'll tell you in a minute. But I don't wanna make him a huge, oh, I don't wanna make him physically a huge part of this. I wanna make him, uh, like, raising him an emotional consideration and what it's like in some of the experiences, but I don't want him on camera a whole bunch. That's uh, what I see a lot of other people doing. I see them kind of like using their kids as sort of like clickbait, like, oh, look at the cute kid, and yeah, good for them. That's not, that's not what I wanna do. I'll definitely talk about what it's like to raise him. I don't wanna have like videos of a cute baby doing stuff. I think you can find a lot of parenting channels that do that. Yeah, buddy. But his, his real name is Benton. So we were thinking about it and we realized the abbreviation for Benton or the nickname for that would be Ben. And Ben is a great name, but it just didn't feel right for the guy. So we started thinking about it. And Ben is also short for Obi-Wan Kenobi. Because in the, the first series, the first trilogy, they called him Old Ben Kenobi. Well, then we thought if he's Old Ben Kenobi, <laughs> Also known as Obi-Wan, we'll just start calling him Obi. <laughs> Obi, perfect. And that's what it's been ever since. So you hear me go back and forth between Benton and Obi with that guy, and it's the same kid. This is Riptide. She is our little girl dog. Uh, you'll see her brother around here, Breaker. He's a big black hound looking dog. Whoa, oh, got a baby down. Hang on. Okay, prop back up, looking out the window. But um, her brother is a big black hound looking dog and she's like a more of a Jack Russell slash terrier mix. Funny story about them too. But we wanted German Shepherd uh, purebreds or German Shepherd mixes. This was about three years ago. So we got on Craigslist. <laughs> Already notice any red flags? We got on Craigslist and we looked for German Shepherd puppies. But we were living in Michigan at the time and we found a, a breeder upstate. So we decided to check out these puppies and she said she had two left. Oh, look at this. So we met her at a gas station halfway between where we were in Muskegon and uh, where she was like somewhere north. And she showed us this little puppy and another little black puppy and they were adorable, super cute dogs. We asked her, are you sure these are German Shepherd mixes, oh buddy. And she said, yes, absolutely. Those are definitely German Shepherds, last two of them. And we go, okay, we'll take them. Well, as they grew up, we noticed they had less and less German Shepherd characteristics. And so we did a DNA test that we got off of Amazon. And it turns out they have no German Shepherd whatsoever. She's a mix of Jack Russell, uh, an Asian breed and, and some sort of terrier. He's a mix of a plot hound, which is an American hound and a uh, black lab and an Asian breed. <laughs> Apparently mom, uh, they had the same mother, but two different fathers, but it couldn't have worked out better. They are the sweetest dogs in the world. We love them. We'd never trade them for anything else. Now we just feel sorry for those other people with the German Shepherd looking dogs because we know those are the fake German Shepherds. We've got the real German Shepherds. So for today, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, except for one thing. I can absolutely promise you uh, that we're going to do this one thing. But first, take a look at this. You see that? That is pure. 100% unadulterated puppy angst. That little girl gets so angsty and so stressed out. And the only cure for it is to take her, her brother, and this baby out for a walk. We've got a fantastic park system, uh, not park system, but trail system up near the airport called the Pendleton Area Trails Association 
Patra. It's Patra. P-A-T-R-A. Stands for something. So every day, I try to take them all out for a walk. And I guarantee that's going to happen today. And you should know that my guarantee is at least 50% of the time come true. Just, yeah. This, this is Breaker. He's the one I was telling you about. The goodest dog in the whole world. We just had this deck built, uh, got complete about a month ago. We're still working on getting the railings in. Hopefully they'll be done in about a month, but up here in Northeast Oregon, it's kind of hard to find contractors and the parts you need to get it done. So it'll happen when it happens. Until then, my overwhelming fear of heights will keep me well back from the edge. Yeah, anything over two feet, I don't, I don't go near. Anything that's a two foot drop or more, I just can't stand that. All right, it's kind of windy out here. He loves it for a little while, but too much, he starts to get cold. We're gonna head back inside. Hey, good guy. Hey, big boy. We're working our way on getting out the door to go for a walk. It hasn't happened yet. But I'll tell you what, I've been dragging at about half speed all morning and I should have been out the door like hour, hour and a half ago and I just, I just can't. And I know this is going to be a total golden cage complaint, but right now my whole job is a stay at home dad, which means taking care of this guy. And Erica works crazy long hours. She works at a hospital. And so sometimes she'll go to work at 7 a.m. like on a Monday and not be home until like a Wednesday. Or one time she went in actually to work on a Sunday evening at about 4.35. And she got home uh, Tuesday morning. No, she got home Tuesday night. And this week has been another long week. She's been putting about 14 hour days every day. Usually I get Wednesday off from this guy. Today's, uh, what is it, today's Saturday. I thought she was gonna be home today and it turns out she's gonna go in to, to work on some paperwork. She has to finish some charts. And that means I get to take care of this guy all day long today. And I will probably end up taking care of him tomorrow. Oh, buddy. And here's the thing is like, I don't have a break. There's, we don't have family in town right now. There's, we don't have a babysitter. And the problem is that I absolutely adore him and I love him, but without a break in there, I'm noticing myself starting to just like space off and not, just not be there, not be present in the moment. And it's, it's getting hard because I'm not able to be the parent right now that I want to be. I'm not able to be the, the dad, the super attentive, loving, caring dad that I really, really want to be for this guy because he's such a sweet baby. He's so adorable and he's so cute. He just needs the best possible parenting. And it's not that I'm tired of him or I don't want him around. It's just like physically, and mentally and emotionally, I have like no gas left in the tank. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are gonna say like, oh, hey, I, we've got eight kids and we raise them every day. You know? Oh, buddy, good, I'm, I'm glad you can do that, I really am. But my experience is not yours. And what I'm going through now is difficult and it's hard. <laughs> And I'm just a first time dad here trying to make do and I don't have those reserves that, that those people would. Yeah. So for me, this is tough, even if other people say it, for them, something like this would be easy. And it's just so sad because the, the result, I just shut down. I just shut down emotionally. I shut down mentally. I, I just slow down and things come to a literal stop. That's why we haven't gotten for a walk yet. But I've decided when he goes down for a nap, I'm gonna try to take a nap too, get a little bit of rest in there. We're up about three times a night, every night. And um, rally, yeah, try to rally for us today. So yeah, I swear, I still guarantee that it's a 50-50 chance we'll get out for a walk later on today. I swear, this dog, she knows sometimes when I could use a boosty and she just comes in, plays with the baby, tries to make him happy. Uh, You're just such a good girl. She's just, oh. She's like a co-parent in some respects. She really is. 
Good kid. All right, we're gonna we're gonna try to take a nap for a little bit. Oh god, I can't reach. Hey. All right, we had a pretty good two-hour nap. That helps. And now I'm warming up some milk for him right there. As soon as that is ready to go, <laughs> Good boy, look how slow. Uh, I'm gonna feed it to him, and then we're gonna try to get out of here and finally go for that walk. It's starting to get late. The sun's going down. But I know we can get this done. God, I'm just not feeling the love. I mean, seriously. When I get depressed, I get tired. And there's no doubt that's what's happening today. It's just I've been super sleepy, second nap of the day. I love this guy to death, but man, I'm just not feeling it. The sad thing is there's nothing really hard about my life right now. I'm just taking care of this and going for a walk with these guys, but it's like one of those waking in mud or one of those uh, running in mud dreams, but you're awake. Hi, buddy. Get you some snacks. Obi. Obi. There we go. You know, one nice thing, super awesome thing that Erica did right before I fell asleep uh, is she texted and said that she had... Obi, don't you want snacks? Obi. Okay, no snacks. No snacks. How dare I try to feed him? But she texted and said that she had confirmed, um, she confirmed us to go to San Diego in March. She's got a conference down there and we've been talking about it. I haven't spent a lot of time in San Diego before and it sounded like a really fun vacation way to just get out of here for a bit. And she said she actually pulled the trigger and did it. So I was like, oh, that's sweet. And she actually said it's the least she could do for me. Um, considering how much she's been at the office. And that really did help make me, make me feel better, like a lot better, very, very much. So, gonna rally, gonna try to get some food in you. Oh, why wasn't I feeding him? That's the problem. And sometimes for me, it's just the little things, like an unexpected little text like that and thought, it makes things better. Oh, wow. baby torture? Torturing the baby because I'm trying to feed him milk. I promise I'll tell you about this and why I don't have an ear before the day is over today. It's just I'm feeling the drive and the motivation to actually get up, get changed, and hit the door. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I just, just got him all loaded up and ready to go. And I'm not kidding you, the very second that I got him in here, I got a high wind warning for Pendleton. I got a rain alert. There's no rain forecast today. And now Erica is saying that she wants to come home for a little while um, after working on charts. I had just gotten up the impetus to get out the door. <laughs> this is always the way it goes. And here's where I am right now is I'm so depressed. I'm so burnt out that not only am I not going to be a super good parent for this guy, I'm not going to be a super great partner for when she gets home. So I either have to say, yeah, come on home and fake it till you make it, or just try to figure a way to get out the door and just go for a walk. Because I know going for a walk is going to help a little bit. At least it'll help some. So what do I do? How do I handle this? Because I know she really wants to come home and I want her to come home. It's just I'm in such a rotten mood. <laughs> I'm not going to be that much fun to be around, and I just have this urge to be alone right now. But if I tell her that and say stay at work, that's not fair to her. She's going to pick up on something wrong. I've got an idea. We were about to leave to go to Patra, period. Dogs need to walk and kid is in his chair, period. Do you want to meet us up there, question mark? She goes for a walk with us. I mean, that, that's nice. We all get outside, we all go for a walk and that'd be great. And it sounds like she's only going to be here uh, at home for a little bit and then she's going to keep plugging away and go back in later on. She can't walk at Patrick, I forgot, this is my bad. She's on call and she can't be away from the hospital that far. Why don't I crank through labs and let me know when you're headed home? Hmm. That's fair, I know I'll be feeling better after, after walk. She'll plan to meet us when she gets home. No, it's sorry. It's, I know it's super rude to be on a phone talking to someone while you're having a conversation. So bad form, bad etiquette. I'm sorry.
Okay, we got this. Do you, do you hear those pops? I wanted to show you the sound of the rain coming down on our, on the metal roof of our shed, but you probably can't hear it because someone across the valley is shooting their gun. Okay, <laughs> a 30 second rant. I used to be into guns, I did. I had a concealed weapons permit. I loved shooting pistols, loved shooting rifles, had a shotgun for a while. But then about 10 years ago, I felt like people have lost their privilege to own or use guns. Kind of like if you give your kid like a lighter and say, just don't hurt anything. And they immediately go out to the wood pile and light the entire house on fire. Our society as a whole just doesn't deserve to have guns anymore. That's just the way it is. We've abused and lost that privilege. Now, I took constitutional law and I get it. I studied it. I understand the second amendment and the rights conferred in that article. So much has changed since that uh, amendment was written and since the founding fathers had that in mind that to stick to that ideal now in our current society would be the equivalent of spotting that iceberg ahead of us and charging full speed at it because hey don't worry the ship designer said the hull can handle icebergs let's test it out no it's it's not going to work no more ranting <laughs> we're heading off to the parks i promise Usually I don't like surprises very much, but when it turns out to be less wind, not raining, and warmer up here than I expected, those are the kind of surprises I'm okay with. <laughs> We're like five minutes into this walk, and already I can tell this is a great idea. Just a moving around, a little, little endorphin release is helping out so much. One of the things I like to do while walking is just put on a good audiobook. So that's what I'm gonna do is, just walk, listen to something, relax, chill out, and kind of get a reset for the rest of the day. Helps so much. And in case you're thinking I'm listening to something deep and meaningful, full of wisdom, no, absolutely not. I listen to Space Marines. That's right, books about Marines killing really, really bad aliens. I feel it's like sort of the, what are those things, like treasure romance novels except for guys, or at least for me because I don't have to think about anything. I don't have to know the plot. And it's so black and white that there is no questioning your own values, your own morals. Aliens bad, humans good. And in this day and age, where there's so many shades of gray in everything, everywhere, sometimes it's kind of nice to have something where you know who the bad guys are. And they're definitely bad. was definitely worth it. I feel so much better after that. And you know what? Having gone for the walk today makes me feel good. I'm past all the rough spots I was having earlier today, but I know that when tomorrow rolls around, I will have completely forgotten that the secret is to get outside and do something physical. I don't know what it is, but there's just something about my brain that I'll make myself feel good in one day, even though the day's almost over. It's like five o'clock. And then not remember to do the same thing tomorrow. I'm probably the best slow learner I've ever met. Oh, by the way, on a side note, Apple AirPods, when you have only one ear, each set comes with a spare. Mm -hmm. It's like double your money. Except the only problem is with the pros, the noise canceling ones, they don't work unless you have both AirPods in at once. Come on, Apple, what are you doing to me here? But yeah, that was really worth it. I feel so much better after that. Okay, I didn't forget. I know I promised to tell you what happened here and how come I don't have an ear. Super simple story. I was just born with that one. That's it, birth defect. This white patch is from an attempt about 20 years ago where they took some skin here from my forearm to try to cover up some red skin that was over here. Didn't work. They said they could fix it. And at that point, I didn't have any more Fs to give on surgeries. Just didn't care anymore. Mm -mm. So I said, no, thank you. Been living like this ever since. But, <laughs> let me tell you. But there's a story. Uh, at the end of the last surgery where I had this um, moved from my forearm up to here, 
I was walking around the hospitals, like the day after surgery, they had stitches all the way around here. It was all swollen and puffy, probably some dried blood around here. I didn't have a beard at the time. I just, horrible, like just greasy skin, green, jaundice looking, like coloring. And I was walking by and I feel so bad about this, I do. But this kid that couldn't have been more than like 12 or so saw me and he was in the hospital too. And, and I was, you know, mid twenties at the time. And he said, what happened? And all I said to him was, you better watch out for sharks. <laughs> Don't, I still blame it on the drugs that they gave me, <laughs> the painkillers. I, I feel bad about it to this day. But I saw him go, oh, I don't think he's ever going to go swimming in the ocean. I'm a bad person. All right, have a good night. I hope your day was better than mine was today. I really do. All right, take care. <music>